Merry Christmas, boys and girls. I'm your principal, Antonio Wilkins, and I'm here to read to a book with you on Christmas Day. The title of the book is The Principal's Night Before Christmas by Stephen L. Lane. So let's take a look at what Principal's Night Before Christmas looks like. The Principal's Night Before Christmas. Towards the night before Christmas and all through the town, all the students and teachers had settled right down. The school parties and pageants had ended their run, and the stress was all gone now that break had begun. So hopefully all of our students and teachers are not stressing and we're resting. But poor Principal Swell still had so much to do that when Christmas Eve came, he was in quite a stew. There were forms to fill out for state-mandated testing, plus some standardized ovals to darken no jesting. And he had promised to fix Miss Smith's PC workstation while custodian Carl was in Guam on vacation. Then the bus routes were giving him headaches galore, for the school board had told him he had better explore a much faster trip to the Vandertrap home where dear Rachel's sweet mama stood right by the phone. To report that the bus had once more arrived late and the stress this caused Rachel, one dared not debate. And another bus driver had threatened should quit because Peter McDermott continued to spit and to scream and to pout and to bully small kids and to make some girls faint when he flipped his eyelids. I'm glad our little boys and girls at school doesn't act that way. But young Peter's parents had threatened their sue when the driver had chastised their boy, for they knew he was truly an angel. They'd said it before in at least 16 meetings in grades 3 and 4. See little Peter, he has a halo over his head. Mr. Swell had to map out a plan over break that would bring resolution for everyone's sake. And he had promised to work out some field trip details so the third graders' trip to see Mantas and Wells at the new zoo's exhibit would continue as planned, even though he had been told that all field trips were banned by the superintendent, Dr. Donald S. Late who had proclaimed just last week that the risks were just too great. So after his own kids were tucked in at night, the good principal raced off to the school to create just as many solutions as could ever, as could ever be mustered. Oh, he sat deep in thought, but soon found himself flustered. By the jingle of bells, the alarm losing power, and a jolly voice questioning, school at this hour? I just sent the teachers all home from the mall, and it seems I'm now paying their bosses a call. Well, I have a few words that I want you to hear. Your devotion to children and teachers bring cheer to the big heart of Santa who knows what is true, and this school district's lucky it's held on to you. Now I've seen the McDermott's, I've checked out the zoo, and I made the else darken those ovals for you. All the rest will be managed, completed or fixed. It's a promise to count on, it's one of St. Nick's. Go on home now, my friend, Santa said with a wink, and before Mr. Swell even knew what to think, that lively professor had boarded his bus and took to the air without making much fuss. His eyes were twinkling as the bus flew on past, but his voice rang with strength as he shouted at last, Merry Christmas to principals, holiday cheer, for they make Santa proud every day of the year. Boys and girls, I hope you've enjoyed the book, The Principal's Night Before Christmas. We hope you've had a great Christmas, and we hope you have a happy new year. Thank you.